What exactly do I mean by the Fermi paradox paradox? If you're watching this video, then odds are that you're at least somewhat familiar with what both the Drake equation and the Fermi paradox are. But if not, I'll briefly explain each. Then I'll be questioning the validity of the Fermi paradox, as well as its relevance here in 2019 and beyond. I have a few unrelated things to discuss after that, so let's begin. We begin with the Drake Equation. Dr. Frank Drake was a highly respected astronomy professor at Cornell University. He was also closely associated with SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. With his knowledge of the cosmos, he believed so strongly that our galaxy was inhabited by a myriad of other intelligent civilizations, he considered it a near statistical certainty. Yet, the topic of extraterrestrial life remained a seldom discussed taboo amongst his colleagues. Frustrated by the lack of discussion within the scientific community, as well as the lack of a means to even estimate the population density of the Milky Way, his 1961 equation would attempt to address both of these problems. While the Drake equation would be widely accepted in mainstream science, it came with one major caveat, that is, even with the most up-to-date knowledge, it still can't provide a definitive answer as to exactly how many planets in our galaxy have given rise to intelligent civilizations. Why? Well, because we currently don't know the exact value to assign to many of these variables. For example, the variable NE represents the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets. We simply don't have enough information to ascribe an exact number to that variable with any degree of certainty. We can only plug in, at best, an educated guess. Such is the case with other variables in his equation. I won't be going any deeper than this into the Drake equation, but I will say this. There's a firm scientific consensus that even when the most conservative reasonable figures are plugged in, the equation still predicts that a massive number of planets here in the Milky Way are inhabited by intelligent beings. We can also safely assume the number of planets and moons inhabited by simpler forms of life is exponentially greater. Keep in mind, this equation only refers to intelligent life in the Milky Way galaxy. Given that there are 100 billion to 400 billion stars in our galaxy, and over 1 billion galaxies in the universe, the likeliest conclusion is that the universe is absolutely teeming with life. Enter the Fermi Paradox It's important to note that the Fermi Paradox came from a conversation that took place about a decade before Drake wrote his now famous equation. Even then, mainstream science had some idea of the probable existence of intelligent life spread out amongst the stars. In the summer of 1950, four prominent physicists were casually discussing recent UFO sightings. All four were apparently highly skeptical of the reports, yet seemed to accept the possibility of interstellar travel and the likelihood that numerous planets throughout the cosmos were host to intelligent life. As all four men were working under the assumption that UFO sightings had rational, earthly explanations, one of them blurted out the obvious paradox in the form of a question. His name was Enrico Fermi. Unfortunately, his exact words were not written down, but the four men recalled the conversation well enough to allow us to construct a reasonable paraphrasing of what Fermi said. It went something like this. If there are so many intelligent civilizations out there, and if interstellar travel is theoretically possible, then why haven't we ever seen any evidence of their existence? This question has come to be known as the Fermi Paradox. Granted, there were countless UFO hoaxes back then, so we have to cut them a little slack. Incidentally, 
UFO hoaxes have become even more pervasive in modern times, so what's the difference between now and then? Despite the hoaxes, we now have a wealth of high-quality footage that, despite having been thoroughly scrutinized frame by frame, continues to elude rational explanation. We have the first-hand testimony of countless, highly reputable, qualified observers, not to mention a whole slew of highly educated astronauts who have gone public with their encounters of what can best be described as non-human intelligence. But perhaps the most damning development is the fact that governments around the world are beginning to publicly admit that we have absolutely no idea what these things zipping around in our skies actually are. That's huge. Let's dissect that last point for a moment. So the U.S. government recently admitted that we have things flying around in our airspace that we don't know exactly what they are. Should we believe that? For all I know, the government is being totally truthful in that statement. But the question is, do they know more than they're letting on? If you believe that they're being truthful, hook, line, and sinker, I would ask you why. Has the government proven itself to be trustworthy? It's simply naive to believe that any government is being 100% truthful 100% of the time. If you don't believe that, then you don't know your history. All governments have lied and withheld information from the public. I'm not saying there aren't good reasons to withhold some things. I'm simply stating that you cannot take their word on anything. Case in point, another recent admission from the U.S. government is that they did, in fact, have another committee looking into the UFO phenomenon after Project Blue Book. Now, the government claimed that Project Blue Book was the last official inquiry into the UFO phenomenon, but guess what? That was a lie. The following series of photographs and video clips share two things in common. First, they have all been meticulously examined by image analysis experts. Second, they were all determined to be genuine. We ought not jump to the conclusion that we're seeing irrefutable evidence that advanced beings from other planets are visiting Earth. Rather, with the understanding that hoaxes have been ruled out, and all other natural explanations have been exhausted, we should be asking ourselves, what exactly is this evidence of? If the quote-unquote rational skeptic truly is rational, as they so proudly claim to be, then they must accept the possibility that what we're observing is something truly extraordinary, something that might not fit so neatly into their worldview. The irrational thing for the skeptic to do would be to assume there's some mundane, natural explanation and simply ignore the fact that numerous experts have unanimously concluded otherwise. It's uncomfortable and it takes a lot of courage to consider possibilities that directly contradict our most fervent, long-held beliefs. But there's wisdom in not being too sure of our own opinions. The nature of the universe and reality itself is inherently mysterious. If we are truly interested in finding objective truth, then we must ignore personal bias and give equal consideration to all possibilities. As such, we have no choice but to consider the possibility that what we're seeing may be evidence that intelligent beings from other planets have not only mastered interstellar travel, but have actually seen our beloved planet up close and personal. If indeed this is a valid possibility, and if you accept the probable existence of advanced alien civilizations capable of interstellar travel, then it no longer logically flows to ask, why haven't we ever seen any evidence of them? The only way this question can logically flow is by completely discounting the alien hypothesis and assuming that every single UFO sighting in history can be explained away by some other means. The logical fallacy is that you don't know that, 
and there's absolutely no way you can prove that. This line of reasoning is what I call closed-minded skepticism. A much better question would have been, have we seen evidence of intelligent alien civilizations? Is what we're looking at right now evidence of alien visitation to our planet? Or better yet, what exactly are these pictures and videos evidence of? These are the questions of a rational, open-minded skeptic. And if that's you, then I applaud you. But there are far more compelling concrete examples in favor of the alien hypothesis. Trace evidence. There are so many examples of this, the blown nodes and inexplicable magnetic properties observed in the affected vegetation within crop circles, the impossible composition of metals observed in multiple slag-like clumps witnessed to have been ejected from UFOs, the slew of anatomical differences between the star child's skull and a human skull. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And each one of these topics is deserving of a video unto itself. So my question to those who continue to swear by Fermi's so-called paradox is this. Exactly what kind of evidence were you expecting to see? Do you really think, if such indisputable proof exists and is discovered, that the mainstream scientific community would openly admit to finding it prior to official government disclosure? No, they would be utterly lambasted. My point in saying all of this is simple. Here in 2019 and beyond, the fact that the Fermi Paradox is still even being talked about as some sort of brilliant, fascinating, real-life conundrum is a paradox unto itself. That's the real paradox. And that's what I mean by the Fermi Paradox Paradox. I think the very best question we should be asking ourselves is one that I previously mentioned. What exactly is this phenomenon evidence of? What is the true nature of the intelligence behind it? Is it something interstellar or perhaps intergalactic? Is it something interdimensional? Keep in mind the concept of a multidimensional reality is taken very seriously amongst the mainstream. Our increasing understanding of quantum mechanics has provided compelling evidence for this. Could it be that what we're seeing is our own technology, but from hundreds or thousands of years in the future? Again, time travel is theoretically possible, and this possibility is as valid as any other. Though I have my reservations about this next one, I'll say it anyway. If the hollow earth theory turns out to be correct, it might just be that what we're seeing is a technology that was developed much closer to home, i.e. inner earth beings. Another fairly popular theory that even well-known, highly respected ufologists have given serious consideration to. What if what we're seeing is evidence of something demonic? If so, I would argue that demonic entities are interdimensional by very nature. I don't know, maybe they're just a subcategory of interdimensional beings. Who knows? Now, shifting gears a bit, I want to do a quick poll to gauge the interest level between two upcoming series I'm planning to launch. In no particular order, the first one is a series that I'm going to call Are Aliens Demons? This is a valid question that I believe is deserving of a much closer look than it's often given amongst quote-unquote <laughs> mainstream ufologists, if there is a such thing as a mainstream ufologist. The other series that I'd like to launch, I think I'll probably call Alien Races, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, I want to go deeply into all of the alleged races that are visiting Earth. There is a lot of hooey out there, 
So I'm going to focus my attention on what strike me as the most credible, plausible races that might be visiting our planet. So vote in the comment section which one you are more interested in. Again, that's are aliens demons or alien races. And there might be some bleed through between the two. I kind of suspect that'll be the case, but we'll see. Last but not least. I'd like to end this video by featuring a fairly new but promising channel I've been enjoying as late, covering interesting topics such as CERN, Hollow Earth, Project Bluebeam, and Harp, just to name a few. I'm impressed by both the quality of her diligence in research and the sheer quantity of information packed into many of her videos, further distinguishing her from the crowd. If YouTube were ever to hold a contest for cheeky, creative and distinctive channel names, well, I'm pretty sure she'd take the cake. Trinity, red or blue pill, hi-ho Kermit the Frog here. I love it. There's also a good amount of variety in her 18 or so videos she's uploaded so far. The heavier videos tend to have underlying themes such as information versus disinformation, very real concerns about the potential harms of certain cutting edge technologies, the wonders of science and nature, and, in general, raising awareness about what she's researching. So I encourage everyone to go and check out her channel. A link to it can be found in the description. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.